Okay, I think we are good. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we are so glad and excited to welcome you on our new major release of Next.js Connect of our beloved child. Uh, and uh, today I will guide you through all the new and old stuff related to this uh, product. My name is Edward Kazakov, and uh, I think we can start. Uh, feel free to write uh, to a chat if something is wrong. You can hear me. You can see something on the screen, or you have some questions related on what is going on. Um, before uh, we proceed to connect itself, I would like to introduce our team, Nick.js. Um, for us, the most organic way to speak about our company is uh, to tell that we produce ready-to-go solution for maps and geodata. Our main product, our main idea is uh, Next.js platform covering, which covers uh, all basic workflows related to geospatial data, um, from geospatial data collecting to geospatial data storing on, in the web, and to um, analysis, uh, reports producing, and uh, all other stuff. Uh, in the context of Next.js web platform, it's important to um, um, note several particular products. First of them is Next.js web. It is our headline product. It is our uh, web.js, uh, the heart, the core of uh, the whole platform. It is the kind of application uh, dedicated to efficient storage of geospatial data in the web. Uh, it can integrate um, external data, um, for example, PostGIS databases, uh, TMS, WMS, and other uh, web services, uh, etc. It has built-in web map publishing system. Uh, it can publish data as services, including TMS, WMS, WFS, OGC API futures, Mobox vector tiles, cloud optimized GetIfs, and more. Uh, it has extensive user and permissions management system. Uh, and it has comprehensive API, uh, which allows you to do anything you want with it uh, via uh, code. Yes, you can get data from WebJS, you can put data into WebJS, you can publish map, you can create users, etc., etc., etc. So uh, you can uh, not only use Next.js Web as ready solution for managing your geospatial data, but also uh, as a base for building your own products, your own uh, web applications, or your own mobile applications using uh, data from server, etc. Uh, second important technology for us today is QGIS. QGIS, I, I, I'm sure that you know, uh, we love it. It is uh, one of the most powerful modern desktop GIS systems. Um, we are core uh, developers for QGIS for more than 10 years, and we are the biggest uh, developer of QGIS plugins. We have more than 30 in our portfolio. Uh, so we know and love this software for a long time. And um, it has very, very good uh, and rich styling customization system, in my opinion, one of the most powerful uh, in the industry. Uh, it has um, very good adv uh, advanced geospatial data editing mechanisms. Um, there are a lot of um, standard and special special analysis and modeling tools uh, built in in QGIS. And it also has comprehensive and very powerful API, which allows to build a lot of uh, different stuff on the top of QGIS. Uh, and uh, in our platform, we use QGIS as a primary desktop tool. Yes, so everything you can see on this uh, scheme it's like about uh, mobile applications, cloud applications, web servers, etc. And there is a QGIS as a des desktop tool. And uh, Next.js Connect, our today's hero, is a special tool dedicated to integration of web and desktop environments into a single context. 
So our purpose is to provide uh, the system where um, you can work with web maps and in web storage and in local uh, desktop JS, like in single environment. You changed, changed something in desktop JS, these changes immediately appeared in WebJS. Uh, you published map on one computer, you can grab it as a QJS project on the other computer in one click, etc. So uh, our purpose is to delete this border between desktop JS and WebJS environments. Uh, and today we'll talk about it in details. I will show you all the basic functionality, option settings, etc. Uh, but before that, I would like to uh, invite you to our um, um, communication systems, uh, our communication um, places where we like to communicate. Um, we uh, provide several types of regular events. Uh, platform updates and uh, chats with devs, uh, mostly after some major releases uh, of our headline product, Next.js Web, and our other products like this event, the presentation of uh, Next.js Connect uh, version 2. Uh, also, we will launch soon our general platform demo on a monthly basis for new and potential users to uh, explore and learn about how things work in our platform. We have several places where we like to communicate. We have community in Telegram, uh, next chat, Next.js talks, and covering, you know, this uh, uh, unofficial uh, conversations with developers and other users of Next.js uh, technologies. And we have a channel, Next.js News, where we publish some uh, fresh updates uh, on um, almost daily basis. Uh, also, you can reach us by email uh, and we have a uh, site a chat uh, built in, in uh, right in our chat, uh, in our site, uh, excuse me. So you can just uh, open nextjs.com in your browser and reach us out through a small chat window in the right bottom corner. Yes, it's absolute, absolutely legitimate way to um, reach out. Uh, so long story short, let's proceed. Uh, this is today's event plan. Uh, we want to uh, show all the basic functionality of Next.js Connect, starting with connecting QGIS to WebGIS. Then uh, we will um, look at publishing data from QGIS to Next.js Web, including uh, uploading entire project as web map, uh, uploading indiv individual layers, creating uh, data publishing services, uh, modifying containing styles, etc. Uh, then we will take a look at retrieving data from Next.js Web in, in QGIS. Uh, for example, we will try to load a web map as a QGIS project. And uh, one of the most exciting updates in this uh, release uh, is direct data editing. Uh, so you can edit data inside Q QGIS without any mediums right into in right inside web storage. Uh, and we will take a look at some small things like managing PostJS layers, etc. And uh, at the end of the demonstration, we will try to understand all the available settings. We will take a look at settings page and describe uh, what it has and what you can set up for your convenience. Um, that's it for presentation part. And now I'm ready to uh, switch to QGIS, if you don't mind. Um, I have prepared one simple project um dedicated to beautiful city of Zagreb in Croatia and uh, let's take a look at this project it has uh, 10 plus minus layers uh, styled with different interesting QGIS uh, styles so we have two base maps um, it's well known basic base maps from Esri and from um, uh, um, CartoDB, uh, these 
um, these maps uh, was added were added through Q Quick Map Services plugin. It also is our uh, development. Uh, you can search and add uh, a lot of base map through it. You have some uh, preset list of base maps, and you also have a, a search engine which allows you to find and add um, a lot of base maps, and not only base maps, and also some vector layers, some WMS services, etc. So I have added two. Uh, base maps. Uh, I have um, RGB um, composite of Sentinel-2 image uh, covering the whole uh, Zagreb. Yes, it's simple uh, geotiff uh, with three bands. I have um, a couple of uh, relief related uh, data sets. I have a digital elevation model and I have hill shade data set. Yes, they styled in a particular way. Uh, we can change it, but it looks pretty. Um, also, we have some uh, several vector layers. Uh, vector layers contain uh, containing roads of three types, and we have uh, three categories here. I can switch them on and switch them off. Uh, I have a population layer. It's styled as um, graduated uh, symbology layer. Yeah, so I have uh, hexagons here containing population of each hexagon. Yes, I have six categories and I can switch them off and switch them on uh, when I want to. Uh, I also have point layer with places points of interest from Overture Foundation uh, data set. And uh, this uh, point data set is styled with special interesting uh, style named point cluster with some non-trivial uh, logic underlying uh, the stylization. So the size of each cluster is calculated with some um, expression, with condition, with some calculations. So it's not just simple uh, clusters. We have some math uh, underlying it. And the same for population uh, layer. We have some, ah, no, we have just populations. Yeah. Uh, here we have some exp expression, yes. And we also have uh, point layer with custom icons. Um, I have this icon in SVG file. It's a icon of creation post. And this layer, layer uh, shows us the places where Croatian posts uh, is located, are located. So uh, yeah, the interesting thing about this style is that we use some custom icon downloaded from uh, some first party resource. And my purpose is to publish this QGIS project as a web map. Uh, I have um, instance of Next.js web uh, deployed in the cloud under this uh, address. Yes, now it's empty. We can see how administrative interface of Next.js web looks like. We can see the tree of resources. Now we have only one default resource named uh, main web map. Uh, I can see that they can create a lot of things here. I can create raster layers. I can create vector layers, style sets, PostGIS connections, and uh, more things. Uh, but uh, what can I do here? Of course, I can uh, do everything in manual way. I can create one vector layer, and then uh, if I put this, let's see one. I um, sorry, I should update my realization. Um, I can simply uh, uh, download, uh, upload here shapefile or geo package or geo JSON or something else and create layers and upload the style to it, then create a web map manually, add this vector layer to this uh, web map manually, etc. So I can do everything through the web interface, but it's not uh, convenient at all, especially if you have some big projects. So uh, we have this Next.js Connect plugin dedicated to solving this uh, task. Uh, you can install it through standard plugins plugins management uh, window. Just find Next.js Connect plugin. Yes. Uh, install it. 
current version is 2.0.9. Uh, uh, and after installing it, you'll see such panel available in your QJS interface. Um, first thing you we want to do is to connect between to deploy connection between our desktop application and our web.js. Let's try to do it. I open settings window. I see that I have no connections. I create new one. I enter the address of my web.js. It could be cloud instance. It also could be an on-premise instance on your own server. Uh, and then I uh, should set up uh, authentication. Uh, this is one. Uh, this is the first uh, important thing in new update. If you used connect before, you remember that uh, we had our own interface for um, entering your credentials. Now we integrated QGIS um, built-in interface of. Uh, QGIS built-in authentication manager. So you can choose some uh, credentials you had in different contexts or create new one of different types. Yes, we now interested in basic authentication. I will enter my username. And password. And we'll name it something like next.js demo event. Say uh, credentials are saved. And now I have them in this manager and they are accessible from any place of QJS. Let's choose that, choose this option, press save, um, press OK. And our plugin now is connected to uh, web.js. We can see this uh, on the existing resource main web map. We are not interested in it very much uh, for now. Uh, what we want to do now is to uh, publish our QJS project to web.js. Uh, to web.js, And I can do it with pressing just one button. I have uh, this button called upload all. Let's try to push it. Uh, system uh, offer uh, suggests us to enter the name for new folder in resources tree in our web.js to organize our data uh, in partner in a convenient way i will call it like a project zagreb and press ok project is being imported and we can follow uh, the progress uh, everything layer by layer uh, now is uh, downloaded is downloading to WebJS. Data, styles, uh, base maps, um, some settings. Uh, so let's wait a little bit and take a look at the result. The process is quite fast. I think that well, it's almost done. Yeah, it's done and uh, the web map uh, has opened immediately. Take a look, we have uh, some web map opened in the browser automatically. We can see some address here in this unique address of this web map. I can use it to share it or to do something. And I can see uh, the web map, which is uh, which looks like uh, QGIS projects. Mm, it's, it's very, very, very uh, similar appearance. So let's just Yes, I will change uh, base map and I can see that the extent, the styles, uh, the appearance is very same. Uh, let's try to um, research what we have in the on this web map. What can we do? What do we have? First thing, let's um, inspect layers and how they work uh, and how they look like. Uh, I have this layer tree panel. It opened by default. Yes, uh, the first thing I can see and name is that it looks like uh, the layer tree in QJS, very, very similar. Yes, uh, all the categories, all the uh, icons, all the styles uh, um, look exactly as in, the, in QJS. Let's try to enable and disable different layers. Um, I will enable this uh, lightweight positron base map. 
uh, first layer is post offices with custom icon. It this icon was downloaded together with style, and we can see uh, it without any additional actions. Yes, so all eight icons are migrated. Um, let's enable places layer. Yes, I can see that uh, it uh, renders via cluster point style. So I can see the same clusters with the same size uh, settings, etc. So everything uh, looks like in QJS, exactly. Uh, uh, let's enable population layer where graduated style was set up. Uh, it works also the same and I can enable and disable all uh, separate categories. For example, let's see where the most populated areas in Zagreb are. Here, here we are. We can identify one of them. As for example, here, 3,600 people live. Uh, uh, let's return back all the categories and enable next layer, roads. Yes, it also looks like QGIS one. Uh, I also can disable and enable all the separate um, layers. Uh, next layer is interesting. It's uh, Sava River, uh, which is styled with geometry generator. Let's take a look on the QGIS. Here it is, Sava River, but uh, we have only this what a river body as a geometry and style builds this buffer zone on the fly. Let's take a look on the style. Uh, we can see that style is set up with geometry gener generator uh, uh, type. Yes, and we have buffer zone uh, in 400 meters around origin original geometries. Yes. and good thing about Next.js web is that it can handle such complicated things as um, geometry generators and as uh, cluster points with some uh, complicated uh, expressions underlying cluster size etc so uh, the secret is that QGIS uh, is used as renderer for web map so we have very, very, very close uh, visualization, uh, almost uh, complete uh, compatibility between QGIS and Next.js web. Uh, let's continue to inspect our layers. We have two uh, layers dedicated to elevation, yes, and they also look the same as in QGIS. And uh, the new thing about uh, Next.js web is support of raster layers legends. Yes, you can see that um, they look yes like in QJS. So now raster layers are uh, almost complete, also as a vector uh, as a vector layers. And I also have this Sentinel two mosaic. Yes, it works. Uh, important thing about this Sentinel mosaic that it was uploaded to Next.js web not as tiled uh, image uh, or something like that, not as simply tiled uh, image, but as original geotiff, yes, with original QGIS style. So we can access original raster data through WebJS uh, and it will uh, render, render as in QGIS. Good. Uh, what else we have here in this web map interface? Um, we have access to attributes of each layer. Yes, we can open uh, attribute tables, we can inspect all the attributes, we can filter them, we can export them, we can uh, create some special filters uh, for this data. We can move to some particular object. We can object this, uh, open this object, yes, and uh, research its attributes, description, attachments, if they are. Uh, we have all the basic stuff like measurements, and these measurements are perform performing uh, on the ellipsoid by, by, by default, not in the uh, not in Cartesian reference system. Uh, and uh, we have also some uh, additional standard instruments um, available on this web map. 
uh, on the left panel, you have uh, search. You can search through your layers and also through uh, nominative database. Yes, you can locate some objects by their geographical names. You have share button uh, where you can copy a link to this map, where you can uh, set up a link and get link to embed this map to your own site. And we have print uh, window. Let's do small uh, map. For example, I uh, enabled a post offices and I will create small printing uh, layout. Yes, I can see everything. I will add legend. I can set up this legend and place it uh, wherever I want to. And uh, I can add some other stuff and I can uh, export this uh, map to one of the formats or to print it directly to my printer. As if I don't need some legend, I can hide it and it will be hide it also in this legend so I have some control over it. Uh, okay, let's take a look uh, what underlies this web map after Next.js Connect uploads everything to WebJS. Uh, folder Zagreb uh, was created uh, and I have all the layers, all the data um, inside of it. So I got not only the map as visualizing something, I got complete database where every single layer is like um, independent database. For example, let's open this places vector layer. Yes, I can see that it has its own address. It has metadata, uh, its point, number of feature count, uh, special reference system, etc. It has uh, style uh, attached to this layer. It has attributes, etc. I can take a look at this layer as a table. I can export it with a lot of options. I can choose format, system recording reference system, which could be uh, custom or one of the EPSG reference systems, I can fill, uh, set up special filter, uh, attribute filter, select fields I need, etc. So I can manipulate it in many ways and I can edit it. So I should, hmm. uh, again, I should rise. Yes, and I see that I can update this layer. I can manage the fields. Uh, the bunch of options to set them up. I can add new fields, delete fields. I can uh, do a lot of stuff. So this vector layer, it exists not only in the context of this published web map, but it exists as um, independent database. We can use it via API. We can create web map publishing services with this layer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay. Uh, this is this one is raster layer. Let's take a look at, uh, at it. Uh, same, I can see all the uh, underlying metadata. I can see QGIS raster style. Yes, um, it's it was immediately published as cloud optimized get if so I can connect to this published raster layer from uh, external applications. If we will return back to some vector layer, I can see the same. All, every published vector layer is immediately published as Mapbox vector tiles data source, and every published style is published as a tile map service with link auto generated for it. Yeah, so after uploading the map, uh, <laughs> inside, yes, and uh, we got the whole very uh, rich database with some data sources automatically published uh, independently, etc., etc., etc. Okay, uh, let's go back to the QJS and uh, take a look at some additional options. What we can do now with published data? Uh, see, we have a lot of resources uh, available in Next.js Connect panel. So everything uh, published, 
is available here. And I can do something right inside Next.js Connect uh, panel. I can edit metadata of each resource. I can create WFS and OGC API features services and WMS services for all vector layers. For raster layers, I can create uh, no services are available, are available, but if I want to publish my, uh, for example, places layer as a WMS service, I can simply push this button, create WMS service, and after two seconds, uh, it will be created and uh, automatically added to QJS. But if I will add, open it in WebJS, I will see that um, WMS server link were generated for this resource. Uh, I can copy it and use it in any, any external uh, software, web services, uh, uh, different JS systems, etc. Same with uh, uh, WFS and uh, OGC API features layers. Uh, I can uh, create separate web, web map for single resource. For example, if I want to share only post offices without any context, I can push create web map button. And I got a super separate web map with this layer only and with default base map. In this case, it was OpenStreetMap standard. Uh, I can also uh, duplicate resource if its type uh, allows it. And of course, rename or delete it. I also can immediately uh, go to this resource location in WebJ and WebJS. I push this button and this resource is uh, opened and I can manage it, change it, edit, edit it, etc. Uh, okay, uh, another interesting things uh, for um, QGIS layers, option download as QML is available. We also can copy it, uh, this style, to immediately apply it to some other uh, layer with uh, default QGIS interface uh, styles, past style in context menu of layers panel. Um, okay. The next thing, thing I want to show is uh, styles management. So let's say we changed our mind and uh, we want to change the style for places. Clusters are not good for us anymore. And we want to show all the places as transparent red points to see this, uh, you know, uh, density map or something like that. What can I do here? I simply uh, changed the style in QJS. Let's select single sign symbol, um, change the color to red, uh, reduce size and set up some um, transparency. Hope this is a, a completely different map. Uh, and now I can Push the button next just connect update layer style and style has already been updated so if we would return back to our map uh, one second zagreb uh, web map open we'll see a new appearance of our places map so i can change styles uh, for layers in a, very, in a very quick way. And uh, it will be updated automatically on all connected maps. Yes, one layer could be connected to different maps, to the unlimited number of different maps. And we can uh, update layers in this uh, quick way. And I want to repeat that everything you can set up in QJS is supported by NextJS app. Uh, okay, and one more thing about styles. Uh, maybe you know that uh, QJS supports uh, multiple styles for layer. Here in styles menu, I can add new styles. For example, let's rename current style to red points and add new style. Let's call it blue points. 
and set up new appearance with blue color with the same transparency level. Here, here we are. Uh, now we have two styles, blue points and red points here. Yes, I can uh, quickly change one to another and vice versa. And now I want to add these blue points style to QJS, uh, to WebJS. WebJS also supports multiple styles for single layers. So I can uh, select these places layer here and find Next.js Connect uh, here and push the button, add new style to layer. Here we are, blue points added to the places map. Let's open it in the WebJS. And we can see that now this layer has two uh, child uh, styles and we can use both of them in the one web map or on other web maps as we want to. We will return back to this uh, multiple styling uh, in the next part. Uh, let me see what we can uh, do here. Uh, more. Uh, hmm, okay, let's uh, do one final thing in this chapter. Let's add one more layer. This land use polygons. We don't have. We uh, haven't had it yet. So here it is. Uh, let's. Um, style it in some default way. I will just make some simple classification by class field. It looks like this. I will, uh, I want uh, set up colors, etc. Uh, and what I want to do, I want to upload this layer, not as map, uh, just like separate layer. And I can do it. I select the folder where I want to upload it. I can create uh, some uh, folder inside if I want to, but now I, I, I don't. So I just press upload selected. And this land use polygons layer is being imported to WebJS. Well, let's wait for a second and oh, it's done. I can see land use polygon layer in my WebJS uh, environment and let's take a look at the administrative interface. Uh, ba -ba -ba land use polygon here here we are I can see this quite big layer uh, 16 thousand uh, features uh, layer style was uploaded automatically I can preview it yes and see the same uh, picture and uh, if I want to I can add it to our web map uh, via direct editing so I can manage all the contact, uh, content and all the settings of my web map right here in WebJS. So let's uh, select land use polygons, push it here, save our map, open it again. And yes, here, here we are with our new land use polygons layer combined with all other layers. So managing WebJS content is really easy with this uh, Connect plugin. OK, let's close this project. And uh, let's try to look at uh, another direction. What if we have some data published in WebJS and we want to connect it inside QJS and work with it in, uh, in our desktop environment? We can do it uh, in quite easy way. So the same Next.js Connect uh, window. Um, in short time, we will try to connect to some other instances and try some other data. But for now, we are good with this published Zagreb project. Uh, I can select um, web map resource and I have an option to add it to QJS. If I will push it this button, uh, it will uh, connect all layers uh, described as a part of this web map. And they will inherit all original styles, uh, all original structure, uh, all original layer tree settings, etc. And we will receive ready to go QGIS projects, QGIS project uh, looking exactly like this web map. Uh, let's try to do it. 
Uh, so what we have, oh, I added a post offices map. Yes, it contains only one layer, post offices. Um, I don't need this one. I need a big map. It called Zagreb web map. Yeah, sorry. So um, what is happening? We have a process of uh, all layers uh, adding to our QGIS. Uh, take note that all layers, all styles were simply uh, inherited without any problems. And uh, all the data were synchronized and we can work with it right now, right here, but with one important thing to consider. Uh, these layers, they are not independent local files anymore. They are connected to your WebGIS storage. Can you see these small icons on the right, right uh, side of each layer? You uh, didn't see such icons in uh, original QGIS. These icons are about um, Next.js Connect integration, yes. And we can see current status of um, layer synchronization between local storage and WebGIS storage. And perfect thing about this mechanism is that now I can edit the data as I do it usual in QGIS using all these instruments like uh, uh, the spe special advanced digitizing uh, panels, all this uh, splitting and cutting uh, tools, etc. And all changes I would do, they will immediately after synchronization uh, appear in WebGIS context. Let's try to do something like that. I open my uh, web map with this post office layer. I enabled editing mode for this layer uh, in QGIS. And let's add uh, one uh, post office into mountains somewhere here. I want a uh, few any attributes. Uh, new object appeared here on the map. I press save button and I exit from editing mode. Let's take, take a look at the web map. This object is already here. So the synchronization uh, was performed as soon as I exit, uh, exited uh, editing mode and this feature was delivered to web storage and all web maps connected to this web storage were automatically updated without even need uh, to refresh the page. Yes, so let's try another one. This is layer uh, about roads. Let's draw some road in QGIS, like snake, and this is ice. Uh, and let's set um, secondary attribute to highway attribute. So it colored in this yellow color. Um, I ended up with editing mode. And let's take a look at our roads layer in the WebJS we can see this road immediately. So we have this um, direct editing mechanism now, and it's very, very uh, good and we love it. So uh, you can also um, uh, inspect the current status of your synchronization, yes. If something is changed on one or another site, you, you will see uh, this uh, the information about it, how many features were added, how many were removed, how many were updated, the current status, are layers synchronized or not, etc. Uh, you can always uh, reset your layer and you can always run uh, synchronization manually if you think that something is wrong with your current, current uh, situation. Uh, well, um, let's continue to uh, add uh, things from uh, WebJS to QGIS. Uh, we all, uh, of course, can add separate layer, not in web, the whole web map, but separate layer. We have these land use polygons, uh, which are not a part of our web map. So let's try to add them, add to QGIS, and here they with styles. The layer is big, so 
we can follow. Ah, <laughs> it was too fast. Uh, this synchronization process took six seconds, and I wasn't able to share to show you. It was too fast, but we can see the result. We can see this layer styled and added to our local context. And I can do anything I want. For example, I don't like this big um, purple or purple area, and I want to delete it. Let's delete it. Let's save. Um, and what we can see on the web map, there is no more Mr. Purple Day. OK, uh, great. Um, interesting thing about uh, this places uh, layer with two styles. Let's close this project again and add only one layer places. Uh, I can select uh, the style I want to use right now. I will select blue points. But actually, both styles were uploaded into QGIS, and I can uh, select them here. Red one, blue one. So uh, this multi-style management is also synchronized between local QGIS and WebGIS storage. Uh, great. Um, uh, what else we want to show you? Mm, let's say, yeah, data editing through web services. It's not a mandatory option now because you can edit data directly from QGIS. But if you want to share uh, the data with editing uh, possibility to some third party JS, you can do it. Uh, simply create uh, WFS or RGC API feature service. Let's try. Yes, I can create it directly from QJS, and um, I can open it in WebJS, and I can see the link. So I can share this link, and people working with ArcGIS, MapInfo, uh, and all other stuff uh, will be able to connect to this layer. And if they have enough permissions, they would be able to edit it. Yes, of course, I can create such services from web interface also. Uh, here we have uh, create resource, WFS service, uh, GC API future service, WMS service, etc. So connect just make makes it it easy, easier for you. Okay. And maybe last thing I want to show you regarding adding data from WebJS to QJS is connecting to PostJS layers published in um, Next.js app. I have another WebJS, uh, this one, demo nextjs.com. You can uh, also access it and take a look on the uh, different examples we have here. We have an example uh, dedicated to PostJS, PostJS connections and layers. Next.js web can uh, connect to external PostGIS databases and create layers for them and use these layers as usual vector layers to publish them uh, on the web maps, etc. So we have PostGIS connection here and several PostGIS layers. Um, let's say we want to uh, connect to this Parks layer. Um, let's take a look at them on the map. Firstly, here we are. Um, yes, green dots. And uh, I want to connect to the same layer from QJS, but I want to connect it as to PostJS layer, not as uh, simple vector layer. I add new webjs demo.nextjs.com. I already have some. Um, Credentials stored in QGIS authentication manager. Let's save it. Okay. Uh, so I can see another uh, WebJS layer tree uh, here. And let's go to examples. And let's find PostJS connection layers. And let's add Parks layer. 
here they are. Let's zoom to the layer. Uh, it's somewhere in the United States, I guess. Yep. Uh, what is important about this layer? It's editable, but if I will take a look into information about this layer, uh, to information tab, I will see that uh, the source of this layer is not Next.js web, it's the original PostGIS database. So I have some not related to my WebJS database hosted on sandbox.nextjs.com with some particular uh, settings. Yes, username, database name, etc. And if I will edit something now from uh, QGIS, the changes they will be sent uh, directly to the PostGIS database. Uh, in this case, WebG, WebGIS is uh, not a participant of this process at all. Uh, so it opens uh, big possibilities for you to manage your data stored on third-party uh, servers if you have such architecture of your system. Uh, well, uh, this, this thing is also new for our uh, Connect model. model. Um, okay, that's it. Um, yeah, another small uh, interesting thing is that we can add not only uh, separate layers or web maps as project, we can uh, also add uh, the whole directories from Next.js web to um, QJS. Let's try to find some not very big project. For example, this elevation data from the itnx.js.com. And let's add this entire folder. And let's see what we'll get. Uh, it found all uh, layers uh, stored in this uh, folder. And uh, we uh, they are available here with their original styles. The difference between adding folder and adding map, the main difference is that uh, when you add uh, the whole folder, uh, all the data um, uh, added in the order you can see here, elevation counters, then order boundary. If we will add a uh, map, the order would be uh, set it up uh, the, in the same way as on the web map. And also web map could, uh, contain, con could contain layers from different folders and they would be added in this way and won't be added in this way. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, some small com co comments. Uh, we can uh, edit data from different uh, WebJS instances in the same time. For example, I added this layer from data .js, uh, data uh, the demo on xjs.com instance and this second layer I would add from another instance with Zagreb map, for example, this one. And I can work with them uh, in the same project and all changes, uh, they would be sent to different WebJS instances. So if you have some very complicated infrastructures with several Next.js Next web instances, uh, this situation could be covered with Next.js Connect model. Uh, very good. Uh, let's take a look at settings then, and um, I'll be good with that. Um, settings window, we have already seen it in this part, connections. Yes, you can always uh, check what which connections do you have. You can edit them. Uh, you can create new connections and re remove old connections, uh, which you don't need anymore. Uh, so let's take a look on other groups of settings available here. First uh, group of settings is uploading. So uh, both options are enabled by default. Uh, they are about should Next.js connect rename field for fields with forbidden names automatically while uploading to Next.js web. And should it upload rasters as cloud-optimized geotiffs uh, 
instead of simple rasters, simple generatives. All the both these options are highly recommended to be active, as because we have some forbidden uh, names for fields like NGV ID, for example, or some 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 else, and uh, if this option is enabled, yes, uh, Next.js Connect will handle uh, such conflicts conflicts by itself without any disturbance to you, without errors, etc. And uh, this cloud optimized GetIf uh, setting uh, is about um, how should we store your raster in web storage. As long as cloud optimized GetIf is much more powerful than simple GeoTIF, and uh, it hasn't um, got any, you know, additional resources um, which should be spent on storing such raster, etc. Uh, there is no real sense to store simple geotiffs instead of cloud optimized geotiffs. But maybe there are some very very rare cases, uh, so you can uh, disable this option. Uh, next group is dedicated to resources behavior. Uh, so this option uh, manages should Next.js connect add player automatically to QJS after you created a uh, service. I remember when we created the WMS or WFS uh, service, it was immediately added to layer three. So if it's not convenient for you, you can disable this option. And uh, another thing, I guess you have remembered it, is about uh, opening web map automatically on creation. So when web map is created after project, uh, full project uploading or after single layer uh, map creating, uh, the map opened immediately in your browser. If it annoys you, you can disable this uh, also. Next uh, two groups are dedicated to this brand new synchronization mechanism. So after adding some layer vector layers from Next.js Web to QJS, uh, QJS uh, want to update synchronization status, uh, communicating with Next.js Web, yes, with WebJS. And uh, with this setting, you can set up how frequently this communication should be done. Uh, we recommend you to use this default option one minute. But if you think that you have some uh, uh, resources spent on this, etc., you can increase this to some hours or whatever you want. Uh, and cache settings are dedicated on uh, how many data after synchronization we can store locally and for how long. So here you can select where uh, should connect, keep this data for how long and uh, with which limit in uh, gigabytes. Yes, And I can see that I have already uh, this 400 megabytes cache and I can clear it uh, any moment. But uh, if I will clear it, uh, I would have to re uh, reload all the data from the my webjs again okay and the last uh, group dedicated to uh, logging so if you experience some um, errors you uh, should enable this uh, message logging and uh, send us log and we will find out what's wrong and what can we do uh, to help you to fix the issue so this is more like for development uh, and uh, bug fixing purposes. Okay, that's it with uh, settings. Um, I think I think that we covered the most important basic functionality of Next.js Connect. Um, now with these new mechanisms of adding web map as a QGIS project and direct editing of the data in QGIS. Uh, we enjoy <laughs> this new experience and we hope that you will enjoy it too. So um, we'll be happy if you will try this new Next.js Connect and um, share your thoughts, share your ideas. 
uh, how to improve it, what what is not enough, what should be added, etc. Uh, I hope that I was able to um, highlight and show you the main concepts and principles. Uh, we will finish with this demonstration part for it. And if you have any questions or any topics to discuss, feel free. Uh, we have a lot of time to uh, discuss anything you want. Thanks a lot for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, feel free.